Hello, Tampa Bay. Pleasure to connect with you this morning, and I want to invite you on a ride. I want to take us on a journey to reconnect to our hearts so that we can live that life of optimal well-being, happiness, and wealth. Does that sound like something you want to come along with? Thank you. So I invite you to reflect on a time that you are sitting in community with your spouse or your partner or your love, and that inner voice starts ruminating. Are they crazy? What are they talking about? Why did they do that? Why don't they see it my way? I clearly know the best path for this relationship. Or maybe it's your in-law or your offspring or your pesty neighbor or that friend who we sit in judgment of and have difficulty connecting with because we're not aligned with them and they are not bringing and providing that joy and happiness that they should be providing us. Or better yet, how about getting ready this morning and maybe stepping on that scale and exhaling and saying, really, I would be so much happier, I would be so much healthier, if only. Or looking in that mirror and seeing things shift and sag, and thinking about, I would be so much happier, I would be so much healthier, if only that wasn't sagging. Or better yet, reflect upon a time when you said, when I have X amount of dollars in my bank account, I will be happy, I will be wealthy, I will have enough. Or maybe it was that car you wanted or that bigger house you dreamed of. I look around this room, I think most of us have most of that. We truly have it all. And how are we doing as a community, as a culture, with our health, our happiness, and our joy? Self-reporting right now, over half of our nation is depressed. Our health risks, our preventable and reversible chronic disease is at an all-time high, as is obesity. Are we doing it right, guys? Amen. The definition of insanity, right? Let's... Think about a new way to approach this. So what if there was a different way to view our health, our happiness, and our abundance? And what if I told you to tap into that? It wouldn't cost you a dime. You don't have to go back to school. You don't have to take the master class. You don't have to go to Tibet and climb a mountain and meditate. What if I told you that that key to your health, your happiness, and abundance was all the same thing? One little key that you already have inside of you. Want to access it? Amen. I do too. So I'd like to take us through a three-step journey where we can reconnect to who we are, who we were born to be. And from this place of wholeness, from this satiation and joy of knowing and loving self, we can interconnect with community, not from a place of lack, or fear, but from a place of abundance and optimal well-being and joy. So let's start that three-step process to have you reconnect 
to what's already inside of you, what you were born and perfectly designed to be. The first thing we need to do to reconnect to who we are is to be here now. So I invite you to place your hand on your heart and to lower your eyes and to take a beautiful, deep breath. Welcome to now. Welcome to you. Why do so many of us not want to be with ourselves? What are we dragging with us? What are we so scared of that now is so uncomfortable? Why don't we want to feel the emotions that bubble up for us in the here and now? Probably because we've been hurt before. We've had horrible things occur for us. We're scared of what the future might bring. So we spend a lot of time distracting from this present moment. So I invite you to digest the concept of releasing with love. Forgiveness is freedom. And sometimes the hardest person to forgive isn't that perpetrator, isn't that family member, isn't that person who broke your heart. Sometimes the hardest person to forgive is yourself. If any of you have read the amazing book Untethered Soul by Michael Singer, he describes such a beautiful experience of a thorn in your body that you work so hard not to touch and you build your whole world around protecting yourself from rubbing that thorn against anything because it's excruciatingly painful. And he introduces the concept of, why don't we take the time and remove the thorn? And that's what it is to be here now. Instead of being distracted but being in this present moment and doing the work and allowing the feelings and letting them roll through your body, inhaling them and exhaling them and releasing them with love. And as far as the future, if we haven't learned anything in the past two years, why are we wasting our time not enjoying right now, but instead worrying about something that There's so many things that could happen that we can't even think of. So my first invitation for you to reconnect to that beautiful and unique self is to be here now. Release with love and stop worrying about a future that's not here yet. The second thing I'd love for you to contemplate is how are you fueling your now? What are you consuming? You're gonna consume something that's a little bit different than me. Why? Because I'm a little bit different than you. We're all supposed to be different. Imagine a globe of vanilla, of one thing. How boring would that be? How would you even know how delicious vanilla could be if you never tasted pistachio or raspberry or salted caramel? If we stop being threatened by different and understand that we are all here for a unique and divine purpose, and when we step into that and fuel our being, In that uniqueness, that is when we get in flow with life. And that is when our inner knowing and our inner being tells us what we need as individuals to fuel our health, our happiness, and our abundance. So no need. We can look outside of ourselves to observe how others are doing it. And we can take that in curiosity and wonder, 
We don't need to judge that. We don't need to tell them that they need to follow us and do it our way. We just need to be us, connected to self, fueling our minds, our bodies, and our spirits with what our inner knowing is telling us. Let's take something literal like food. When you're present and you know and love who you are, your body tells you what it needs. Stop eating or maybe eat something green, or stop drinking, or you don't need that extra pair of shoes, right? It's about fueling your experience from that present moment. And to get back to listening to others, as we really get comfortable in our own skin and understand that we're supposed to be different from that person on your right, and we're definitely supposed to be different from the person on your left, that's when we start listening. We listen to that inner voice. We connect to ourselves. And we're not threatened by that difference. We take it with curiosity and wonder. That's so interesting that they see it that way. I wonder why. Huh. That's a brilliant idea. Actually, I'm going to incorporate some of that. I'm so glad I was here now in this community to be able to pick up that tidbit. I'm going to incorporate it. Or maybe that exchange through listening in the now is fueling you to know that is not who I am. That is not who I want to be. And you don't need to. You actually don't have the right to project who you are onto that person. You are just welcome to be in community or not. That is your choice. So what are you fueling your mind, body, and spirit with? Are you listening or are you too busy projecting? And are you able to sit in this present moment And embrace the fact that you are indeed different because you have a divine, unique purpose for being here. Think about a person that is living their life on point, is not worried about what you say about them, and quite frankly isn't worried about telling you what you should be doing, but someone that is so comfortable in their own skin, and they're living their life on point. You want health? You want happiness? You want abundance? Get in touch with your purpose and live your life on point. So, as we're reconnecting to self because we've released, we're here now, we're not worried about that, and we're fueling our mind, body, and spirit, Where are you casting your vision for your future from? Are you casting it from your head, your ego, the Joneses? Or are you casting it from your heart? So I'm going to invite you again to place your hand on your heart. And I'm going to ask you to take a second deep breath in the now and feel your connection to your heart. It is time to remember. It is time to reconnect. Disease is dis-ease. We are disconnected as a community. We are disconnected as a culture, and we can't connect with one another until we connect with self. Self Self-love and self-care are not selfish. They are your right and your responsibility, knowing who you are, knowing why you're here, and showing up in community satiated and whole and overflowing with abundance that is easily shared because you don't need from other. You don't need their approval. You don't need their bigger house. You don't need their job title. You are healthy, 
happy, and whole on your own two feet. Then you show up in relationship or at work from that place of wholeness. But we must connect with heart when we step out into community. And it's not about what is our job title, how many zeros come in my paycheck, what car is parked in my driveway. It's about how do I want to feel, how do I want to show up, and that will be the energy that you attract. So Tampa Bay, I invite you to find within yourself your divine, unique health, happiness, and abundance. We're never going to find it out there. It's already within you. And as I like to say, it's two simple sentences. They're possibly the shortest sentences I've ever heard, but they are my mantra, they are my guide, and I hope that they resonate for you. Be love. Namaste, Tampa Bay.